In a previous video, I covered the topic of why they remove rubber from runways. This is because when planes land on a runway, their wheels are stationary. And when they touch down, the wheels skid on the runway, leaving behind melted rubber, which then has to be cleaned off the runway regularly. A common question people asked is why they can't put motors in the wheels or wind vanes on the tires or rims to have them already rotating at landing speed so they do not skid and leave behind rubber. Well, for those who don't want to hear the long explanation, the short answer is yes, it can be done, but it's not worth it. But for all those who want to know why, keep listening. First, I want to mention the main source of my information. It's from a 2009 report by SAE Aerospace called Tire Pre-Rotation at Landing, report number AR5800. You can view this report online if you search for it. This report details the trials of various devices, along with their advantages and disadvantages. Some of what I cover in this video is a summary of that report. The idea of pre-rotating wheels prior to landing to reduce tire wear and spin-up loads has been proposed and patented since the 1940s, especially during the development of new airplane models. Inventors have come up with various ideas to solve this problem, including motors to spin the wheels and various styles of wind vanes built into the tires or rims that capture the wind and slowly spin the wheels up to speed as they are deployed for landing. Even though it seems like it would be an easy fix to add motors to airplane wheels, it would increase the complexity and weight of the landing gear system, which is already subject to extreme stresses during landing. Introducing additional mechanical components such as motors could increase the likelihood of mechanical failures and require more maintenance, which would impact the overall reliability and safety of the aircraft. It's not that a motor could not be added to the wheels. One company has even designed an electric motor to attach to the outside of the wheel to act as an electric taxi system. This would enable planes to maneuver on the ground without using main engines or a tractor for reversing stages. But spinning the wheels to the appropriate landing speed would require a substantial amount of power. Supplying this power efficiently, especially during landing, would be challenging. The development, testing and certification of such a system would also be expensive. Airlines and aircraft manufacturers must evaluate the costs and benefits of pre-spinning aircraft wheels. Although the concept has theoretical advantages, practical challenges and expenses have made it impractical so far. External devices like wind blades attached to aircraft tires or rims would likely be ineffective because they wouldn't provide sufficient force to spin the tires to the required speed. Additionally, the harsh conditions and forces experienced during landing and takeoff could cause such devices to snap off or sustain damage over time. Another reason why it would not be viable to have delicate motors in the wheels is because during extreme braking in an emergency or during testing, the brakes can get red hot and could start a fire that could damage motors or melt wiring. Another reason it wouldn't be viable to have some kind of passive wind blade system on the tires or rims is that when an airplane takes off, the wheels are spinning at high speeds. If the wheels were left spinning when retracted into the wheel wells, the gyroscopic forces could cause significant stress on the landing gear and associated structures. Because of this issue, prior to being retracted, the wheels are braked to a stop. This minimizes stresses and ensures the longevity and safety of the landing gear system. Any passive wind capturing system would work against this procedure. There are four major tire suppliers to the aerospace industry, Goodyear, Michelin, Bridgestone, and Dunlop, who all compete hard for airline and other aviation tire business. One of the chief factors in tire choice is the projected number of landings, the number of retreads, and finally the price. If the tire companies could gain a significant competitive edge by adding vanes to the tires to extend tire life, they'd seriously consider it. They'd have to balance that edge with the cost to develop the veins, gain regulatory qualification, and replace the very expensive tire molds. These actions would cost a lot of money and would increase the tire cost and could reduce their profits. The main reason why a passive wind blade system would not be realistic is because airplane tires are very heavy, because they have to support the weight of an entire airplane. On top of that, there's a heavy wheel and the rotating segment of the brake assembly. Getting all that weight spinning to around 160 miles per hour during landing would take a lot of energy, probably much more than you could get from attaching blades to the rims or tires. Plus, adding motors to the wheels would add unnecessary weight to the airplane. 
Every pound of weight is a pound of cargo or passengers that can't be carried, and it would also be one more thing to require maintenance. The theoretical benefits of spinning up the tires to reduce wear would be minimal at best, and the costs and disadvantages would more than offset any benefit. Furthermore, the bulk of the wear on aircraft tires is during taxiing, not landing. Aircraft spend significantly more time taxiing, which involves maneuvering the aircraft on the ground before takeoff and after landing. During this time, tires experience continuous friction with the ground as the aircraft moves to and from the runway, often including numerous turns and adjustments in speed. This constant contact with the pavement leads to gradual wear. Overall, the cumulative effect of prolonged ground contact, maneuvering and braking during taxiing leads to more wear on aircraft tires compared to the brief but intense forces experienced during landing. Finally, according to Boeing, every pound or half a kilogram of weight removed from an aircraft can save up to 11,000 gallons of fuel annually for long-haul flights. At around $2.30 per gallon, that equates to a $25,300 in savings per plane per year for just one pound of weight saving. So it's not that no one has thought of the idea to spin up wheels prior to landing to save rubber. It's just not worth it.